Hi guys and welcome to Faywood. This is the next part of the necklace and in this video I'm going to add some threads and things. So I'm trying to start layering up this necklace with uh, different textures like I mentioned when I was planning it out. Um, and I thought one way to do that is to really bring in some of those embroidery stitches. I am not an expert in embroidery so uh, don't watch this thinking you're going to learn from an expert. Um, like a lot of things I do on my channel I, I like to try new things and so I went through some of my um, I do have a number of embroidery books. Bead embroidery I've done plenty of but just thread embroidery I don't do a lot of at the moment but I do want to start bringing more of it in. And I did start doing a little bit of um, that in the Skeksy necklace as well. So I'm using some different threads here. Um, on the outside I did just some parallel uh, angled stitches with a Goodman thread. And the colour on the thread, it says it's um, 232. So these are all very dark blue uh, navy kind of colours. And with that against the purple, it gives it sort of an indigo color. That's kind of what I'm going for as a uniform um, color to bring everything together. So there's a lot of elements to the necklace, as you can see. And this blue is going to be something that ties it all together because I'm edging it all with the blue and filling in some of the remaining details with the blue. So in addition to that, I'm using some of the embroidery floss you can get, the multi-strand uh, threads. This one is a Sullivan's one, and I'll give you the number in case you want to use the same colour. Um, it's 45206, it says on the little um, packet thing, so I believe that's the colour. Again, just a navy blue colour, and I'm doing um, a, a sort of knotted stitch that I saw you know you loop the thread around each stitch and it just adds a different um, texture to the stitches. These are stitches that I had in um, an old embroidery book and again I'm not an expert on the stitches but you know um, I was happy with how they came out and I was just trying to sort of layer up uh, different textures next to each other and I definitely wanted to edge out the piece because what I was finding was I needed to know where those borders were so that when I do the rest of my, um, you know, either beadwork or stitch work or whatever, I'm not going outside of the line of the design. So this really helped me form up that design. Now I decided to try doing some stitches with ribbon. Now this is a little tricky through the stiff stuff. So for all of these um, stitches with the thicker threads, I had an um, old embroidery needle. I couldn't tell you the actual size of the needle, unfortunately, because I've had it for so long. But you basically just want a really thick needle that's going to um, make it a bit easier to pull your thread through the stiff stuff. Um, and it will be tough with the ribbons. You can see I'm using pliers occasionally to kind of pull that through. So one thing I would say as well, like I did put these mushrooms in place a little early. You saw one of them uh, fell off. Um, and I ended up gluing them on with E6000, which is not ideal when you've got so much uh, material threads because you could easily end up with glue where you don't want it, but I had to do it to make sure they stuck in place. So recommendations, you, if you watched that video, make sure that you do put a little bulbous end on your wire before you make your mushroom on there. And also wait till the last minute to put your mushrooms in place. I just kind of needed to know where I wanted them for design purposes, but I could have probably not fixed them in place and just 
you know, got a feel for it and then continued with my stitching. And if I was doing it again, I would do that because they got in the way of almost every bit of stitching, so. Uh, now, this is a different stitch I saw where you um, stitch backwards and then wrap the thread uh, around the needle the same number of times. I think I did nine times or something like that. Uh, and then pull it taut and <laughs> you can see it's a little bit tricky sometimes to do it but if you do it right it should kind of go in a thick um, little tight stitch I guess. So I did have a little bit of trouble occasionally with this one and I think this one would take me more practice. I um, I don't know it didn't quite come out. It did give an interesting texture though mind you. It wasn't totally even stitching the way I did it uh, so I wasn't totally happy with that but this is a more organic piece and a bit more forgiving <laughs> if you do things like that. So once I did that I wanted to fill in some of these areas with some um, just straight uh, stitches and you know really um, pad them out again you can see it keeps getting caught on my mushrooms there but um, I had two colors here so the other color that I had was a scan silk color and this one's a little thinner of a thread and the color on it was 1824 and I tried to give a bit of an, an ombre effect um, so that you know it sort of shades from a slightly paler blue to the darker blue and I liked the way that looked and this is just additional layers to the necklace. Now I tried to keep the stitches relatively parallel but uh, they were not super super neat. Um, I mean partly partly from design and partly just lack of skill on my part but again I feel like this necklace allows for a little bit of an organic stitching so I, I could get away with that a little bit. And I did end up grabbing the end of the shibori silk and it was quite a nice way to stitch that um, raw edge down uh, and I do go over this later with some additional layers of things but that will be a next video. Um, so yeah it just gives me some then textural base. And I really like how this dark uh, navy blue plays against the purples and dark greens. And it does make the blue look a little bit purple, which is what I was hoping for. So I just basically filled in any spot on the lacy stiff stuff that was bare and uh, then stitched that into some of the threads nearby as well. I did have to be careful not to pull too tight because I don't have this on a stretcher obviously it would be impossible to put this on a stretcher. Uh, I don't know if maybe I could if I had have kept it in one piece I could have tried to put the lacy stiff stuff on a stretcher but it's not really the same type of um, material that you normally stretch over a hoop. 
And the nice thing about stiff stuff is it does have a bit of um, allowance for you to do lots of stitches and hold its form. But I did find that this was starting to uh, shrink and warp a little bit. So I will probably address that in the layers that I put underneath this when I put the backing on and uh, so forth. Just to try and make sure that it it's minimal the amount of um, you know warping or anything that you could see and, and I'll be able to stitch that down then So it was a lot easier to fill in the spots with the um, Goodman thread, but the scan silk one being a lot thinner uh, did take a lot more stitches. So the scan silk is the um, lighter of the blues, but there's a lovely sheen to the scan silk. It's it is meant to be for embroidery. I, I think the Goodman one is a bit more of a blanket stitch thread. It's thicker. Um, but I really like it. I don't. I don't mind having threads that are a little bit more rough and ready, a little bit rustic, and having that combination of different threads is interesting to me. So that's it for this video guys. Um, I hope you're enjoying to see how this necklace is coming out. Stay tuned for more on where this necklace goes from here. Subscribe if you want to see that and I'll see the rest of you next time in Feywood. Bye guys!